Hello, hello. This is Peter, and today we'll talk about the model Context Protocol and the Microsoft Learn Docs MCP server. So recently this repository became available, Microsoft Docs slash MCP. It contains usage instructions how to work with the Microsoft Learn Docs MCP server. We're also using discussions, issues, and pull requests to have a conversation and to make future announcements. So the README describes key capabilities, an example configuration in JSON. The tool it exposes currently Microsoft Talk Search, and then uh, configurations for various other clients, including VS Code, Cloud Desktop, Cloud Code, Visual Studio, and others. And then some challenges that people run into uh, still using this. Okay, great, but why would I need this? Let's have a look at VS Code. In here, you can have a chat conversation with GitHub Copilot that works in a very uh, various modes, ask mode, edit, and agent. Agent we'll talk about here, which is where you can give an assignment to Copilot and we'll try to perform that. It does that using a language model. And the language model, in this case, GPT-40, has a couple of limitations. One is it was trained on generic web data, not specifically Microsoft technologies. And then next is that it was trained until a certain point in time, in this case, October, 2023. And so when you want it to be able to search a certain specific knowledge base that's up to date, then that's where MCP comes in. So model context protocol literally is a protocol that adds context to your models. So the generic GPT-40 model can then be enhanced with a search with up-to-date learn data in the knowledge base. How does that work? This diagram uh, from the build session that James and Katie did, DEM 5.7, describes it pretty clearly, I think. And so there's MCP hosts like VS Code, MCP client, GitHub Copilot, and then it can talk MCP until uh, with a local server that goes over your local data, like file system, a uh, local server that runs uh, commands against the remote servers like GitHub or Azure, and a remote server, as we have here with LearnDocs, that then talks to the Learn knowledge base. Um, the difference in configuration is uh, clear when you look at this. So the MCP uh, README has a link to install the MCP server in VS Code. When you do that, you can install it in user settings and it adds two, three lines to uh, the JSON that configures your uh, MCPs. In this case, you see that I also have the Azure server running. This is a local server that is running a local MPX command. And as mentioned, DocsMCP is a remote one that goes out to this endpoint. By the way, this doesn't work in your browser because it returns streamable HTTP. And so your browser will complain, but MCP clients, many MCP clients can handle this. When um, AI agents support MCP, this is an open protocol, the, the standard that uses many um, Microsoft MCP servers, but also uh, a whole bunch of others in the industry. One other thing, MCP discovery I've turned off because when you have additional AI clients like uh, Cloud Desktop and you have MCP servers configured there, you can reuse them here, but I don't want that. There's also a way to change these settings for each of the workspaces that you have. For instance, when you don't want to run Azure and Microsoft Docs MCP every time you open a VS Code instance, you can set those settings for workspace level. So here in a local folder .vs Code and then a local file MCP JSON, you can have a configuration and then have various MCP servers for each of your workspaces. Okay, how does that work? So, it 
I'll ask you the question, how to create an Azure storage account using Azure CLI, ask Microsoft Learn. This is a hint to make it go out to the Docs MCP server. This is another hint. You can also provide instructions. In this case, I've added, if a question includes a Microsoft product server technology, you should leverage the Microsoft Learn Docs MCP server to search for an answer. Okay, and so that works here. It understands the question and it passes that on to the MCP server. I can continue. And now it's working to get a response. Here are the steps. And this is the command. If you want more information, go to learn docs. Uh, interesting. Now, you. the interesting part about agent mode is that you can have it ask a question, but then you can also do additional things, right? So create a storage account in a certain region, also create dependencies with random names. And so in this case, it's doing the same as the sample question I provided before, but now it's also going to take that response from learn and then take that into a terminal and actually run those AZ commands. And you can imagine that in uh, other scenarios, you may want to use an MCP server to do additional commands like the GitHub one and the Azure one. Uh, so it creates the resource group. I didn't say it should create a resource group, but it did that because it understands dependencies. Uh, and so then it also creates the storage account that will only take a couple of seconds. And then uh, as you can see from the response from creating the resource group, the which is a JSON answer, the storage account will do the same. And so that answer will be interpreted by the language model and then summarized on the right. Uh, there you go. Hope that helps. I'm uh, looking forward to see what other things you can do with Learn MCP. If there's additional things you want it to be able to do. Um, and then, as I mentioned, there's additional Microsoft MCP servers that you can connect in one agent flow to make it do additional things like with Azure DevOps, with Dataverse, with um, SQL, with AKS, etc. Microsoft Docs slash MCP. Thanks for watching.